When about to say hello, today we're talking about something which has been around for absolutely decades. It is, of course, the hydrogen, one of many cell sealing systems which are available on the market today. Now, I'm not particularly biased to something, but I will only use something that works, and I can say these things do work. This is Will. He's the main man from Hydrovane. Good to see you, Will. Yeah, good to see you, Chris. Yeah. All right, mate. So can you talk me through what's happened with the Hydrovane in the last few years? Because things have changed, things have evolved. Yeah, so as Chris mentioned, we've been around for a long time, 1968. That's when Hydrovane and Aries kind of first entered the self-steering market. Yeah, yeah. And uh, things have come a long way. The, one of the big developments for us was actually a bigger rudder. So oh, you actually made the rudder bigger? Yeah, so originally the rudder was actually 12 inches shorter, yeah. and there was a version that was six inches shorter, and then we went up to this bigger size because boats are only getting bigger. So we need, to, we, need, very true. we need to accommodate these bigger boats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the drive unit was reworked uh, over 20 years ago, but we're constantly refining it. We've changed the conrod assembly. We've changed the material we use on the shaft. So what so are you using for that now? So we now use super duplex stainless. So it's duplex stainless. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's massively strong in comparison to normal stainless. Yeah. And it's also really good with corrosion. Exactly. I think it's like 200% more corrosion. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic so. stuff, yeah. And then just working on sort of refining it, we do options like LED stern light on the back because a lot of people are mounting them in front of their existing stern light. Yeah, yeah. Um, this particular unit is a powder coated, white powder coated well, This option. is the first time this has happened, right? Yeah. This is the first one yeah. and it's really cool. So if you've got a nice fancy swan or an ice you want to color yeah. code that, it is pretty cool because the old sort of gray one, yeah. we had one of them in the past and it was really, really cool. Yeah. But this is a little bit bling, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's an option. You know, we actually have it on our boat with the white castings and our pre previous two boats both had the gray castings. Yeah. I like the gray castings, but this blends into the, the hull more. Yeah, it's really nice. So shaft wise as well, I think diameters have changed over the years. Yeah. So if you're looking at buying a used one, which you guys still deal with, Yep. You still deal with people yep. and help them out with the old ones. Yep. It is important to know there's two shaft diameters yep. and it's the internal shaft down here that matters. So I, don't get a one too small. I think Chris thing. knows more than I do. I'm just going to let him do the rest of the show for me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I used to fit for these guys, so I do know quite a bit about yeah. the hydrogen. But Will's the main man. He yeah. knows a lot more than me. So I think you've also been working on a rudder. Yeah, this so one, this, yeah. this is another rudder that we have. So Go on, this, is a, this is a poly rudder and it's a different material. So this rudder is actually designed specifically for boats 37 feet and under. It's uh, lighter weight. So it's for smaller boats. You know, it's nice having less weight on the back of the boat. It's also buoyant, it floats. That thing is a real advantage. So some people like the fact that if it, something happens, it's gonna float to the surface. You always keep a tether on it regardless. Yeah. But this just gets it into a better price point for smaller boats that don't necessarily need the bigger nylon rudder. Yeah, so the nylon rudder, it really does weigh a ton. And I remember the first time yeah. I picked one up, I thought, oh my goodness. Yeah, you can see. But it's quite amazing when you put it in salt water how buoyant it becomes. Yeah, so, it's almost neutral. Yeah, it's quite This amazing. one's buoyant, but this one's uh, negative buoyancy. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to see these guys still innovating a product which has been around for absolutely decades. Yeah. Of course, we've also got the actual vein itself comes in stubby sizes, adjustable sizes and all sorts. And I think in general, it's super tailorable to a boat. But yeah. what always struck me with the hydro vein was is how easy it is to fit, basically how easy it is to maintain and look after. So in the actual drive box, there's not yeah. much going on, is there? Yeah, really? I mean, we always say, don't grease anything. Grease is bad. Yeah. Spray it with WD-40. When you wash the boat, wash the hydro vein. Yeah. Um, the other thing I think that's really relevant, especially right now, is the fact that it is an emergency rudder, so for all these orca attacks that are happening that's on Gibraltar, a point, mate. Yeah. it's a pretty pretty big deal. You disengage it, and that's your backup tiller and rudder. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that are really focusing on the fact that it gives you that redundancy. I mean, orca attacks are one thing, but I think secondary to that, if you are maybe, there's more and more people, let's just put it simply and straight, there's more and more people, more and more people crossing oceans yeah. on production boats that weren't, not necessarily, designed for that 100 percent. and they do have problems with their yeah. rudder more often than others it's nice to have a package well i think if you have a spade hunt rudder it doesn't matter what type of boat it's on you are more vulnerable to hitting something yeah you are yeah. you know whereas a full keel it's going to hit and deflect out but yeah anything can happen spare parts wise anything that usually goes wrong with them and if there was what would you look at 
The vein covers will deteriorate in the sun. That's yep. you know primarily so cosmetic. The locking pins, you've got three on the unit, one for the shaft for the rudder. Yep. They'll fatigue over time, especially if you're motoring a lot, the chatter yeah, the will get it. Uh, we have a drive sleeve inside here, which is what it rocks back and forth on. You'll be doing 15,000 miles before you look at replacing that. Okay. And that's like a four, four pound price point. It's pretty cheap, yeah. yeah. The only one that I've seen aside from that is someone mal using the top piece here. Yeah. And they were quite, to be honest, they did tell me that they were doing the wrong things. But I believe that you sorted that out in no time. So. Yeah, well, and the Conrod. So the old style had a casting here as yeah. a connection point. And so what would happen is people would leave the vein on when they're at anchor and it would rattle back and forth and it would slowly fatigue the casting. We didn't see a lot of failures of it, but we just got rid of it and put it straight onto the bobbin and now it's much tighter and there's less play in the unit. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a pretty cool setup and like, basically they're super tailorable as well. And you guys, if you are interested in one, I know that you actually, well basically you just get in touch with you directly, yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah, we deal worldwide. Everything goes through us and we manufacture in Nottingham, everything ships factory direct. Yeah. And you spec all of the bracketry up so you don't have to worry about yeah. that? Yeah. Even two boats that are the same won't necessarily use the same configuration. So okay, cool. every unit has to come to us or every boat has to come to us and we figure out exactly what they need. We have different veins. We have three different veins. We've got different like shafts. We have different brackets depending on the nature of the transom. Yeah. But there's pretty much not a transom we can't do. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So literally, shaft can be extended down and up over yeah. and then also it can be extended from here up as well yeah right? yeah we have an extension for here that can either go 12 inches or even 20 inches so here's a question for you <laughs> with all of the modern autopilots and the yeah. likes do you still think there's a place for this 100 percent. i think um, we've seen a huge resurgence in people wanting to go with something like this because at the end of the day autopilots are great we love them but there's a lot that can go wrong in an autopilot chain. You need to have a properly functioning autopilot, you need to have battery voltage, you need to have charging systems to support that. Um, I think for most people that are going longer distance, the fact that you can have a system that's not dependent on any aspect of the boat yeah. is worth a lot. On that note, just to answer that question myself as well, yeah. I'm just thinking back to a couple of people that I've met who use the Hydrovane, and some people who are like long-term cruising they don't want to run their autopilot on their big, big rudder all of the time because it's quite power hungry. Yeah, yeah. So what they have is the little tiller pilot yeah. and it goes straight onto the auxiliary tiller. Yeah. And that basically means you're using a smaller rudder, which is right aft on the boat. Yeah. So it's got more leverage. Yeah, the cool thing with that is you can go buy the cheapest tiller yeah. pilot you can find, or, you know, Raymarine 1000 or Simrad equivalent. Yeah doesn't cost much. Yeah. You don't have to carry expensive spares for your main autopilot because yeah. that's your redundant system. I remember some people I spoke to were going to go and buy the, another Raymarine Type 1 drive and I'm like, yeah. whoa, mate, that's like thousands of pounds. Yeah. Just, you've already got a Hydrovane. Yeah. Just buy the cheap one. Yeah. Goes on there, done. Yeah. And yeah. it does work really well. When we were sailing our first boat to Australia, our main autopilot crapped out and we were in Fiji. And we were going out the pass and we said, well, who cares? We're not going to turn around and get this fixed. Let's just keep going. We've got the vane yeah. and we've got the tiller pilot for yeah. as, our, as our backup. And we never fixed our main autopilot. We just ran <laughs> under the, the vane and the tiller pilot the rest Fantastic. of the way. <laughs> it's easy done. It does work. It yeah. is good. Yeah. Okay, so if they need to find these guys, where do we find you? Uh, go on our website, hydrovane.com. You can follow us on social media. Uh, but just send us an email and we can, we can set you up. Okay, so that's it for Sail Up for this week. So if you do like the content, please do like and subscribe. It keeps us ticking along. It allows us to get to the boat shows, meet people like Will, and tell you about what's happening with products. So we'll see you next time. All right, cheers, mate. Thanks so much.